At 13, I walked away from any idea of faith, faith in God, faith in people, and faith in myself. A single thought consumed me. What's the point? I thought it gave me freedom to do as I pleased, not caring whether I lived or died. But instead of freedom, it put me in prison of addiction and self-destruction. Turns out, not caring about anything or anyone is a dark and lonely place. This was me a year ago. I began drinking heavily again and doing heroin. I dropped out of school and lost my home. The only time I felt like a person and not just a shell was when I was drunk. Naturally, I began drinking more. I wanted to escape, not just from reality, but from myself. After a wet and cold night on the 4th Street Bridge, I knew I had to figure out a way to get a roof over my head. Luckily for me, there's only one shelter in Pueblo. Because if I had a choice, I would have never stepped foot into the mission because of its faith affiliation. I lived in the darkness for so long that I had forgotten what real love looked and felt like. I believe that is why God placed me at the Pueblo Rescue Mission, to learn how to love and more importantly how to be loved. I was a devout atheist the day I walked into the mission, although looking back, I think my desire not to believe was greater than my actual disbelief. I had this notion that faith in a higher power was a way for those too weak to fight. What I didn't know then was that contending for your faith is one of the bravest and hardest things a person can do. When I left the mission, I was still a non-believer, although slightly less devout than when I had walked in. The seed had been planted and the doubts began to grow within me. They continued to grow in the months that followed until I couldn't ignore them anymore. I began questioning everything down to my very core beliefs. I couldn't understand how someone as adamant about there not being a God as me could be saying maybe. Without a single shred of proof, I pursued what I was feeling. One night I stumbled upon Jeremiah 29, 13. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. With this one verse, everything seemed to come into focus. All the doubts I had suddenly turned into facts. I felt as though God was speaking directly to me, telling me that all I had to have was a desire to know Him, to say yes to Him. As I sat there in awe and seriously confused, I started putting the pieces together of how I had gotten to that point. I realized God had sent me to the mission to learn love so that I could recognize His love. He showed me I was willing and able to believe in something that could not be proven or quantified through theoretical physics of all things. <laughs> He called to me in a way I could understand and was willing to listen. I answered his call September 13, 2015. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your soul. Today I am filled with that inexpressible joy and am proud to proclaim myself a daughter of Christ. My life has definitely done a 180. Um, I recently graduated from my EMT basic course. Um, I'm a job course student in Roswell, New Mexico. And, um, you know, I've never been this truly happy before. I mean, it's like that pure happiness. It's not that fleeting happiness of like, oh, I'm happy right now. And then, you know, a little bit later, a couple of days later, it's, eh, you know, it's life. You know, it's, it's that inexpressible joy. There's no way that I could go back to what I was 